So, um, this is Megan. Hi. And, I'm Frida. And this is Jason. And this is Andy. Hi, Jason. Um, hey. Pete. Pete. Lana. Hi. I'm trying not to blind everybody. Yeah, that's my sister. This is Hope. David. Tina. Hi. Myron. And Rusty's right behind you. And you are? My name's Tom. Tom. Nice to so meet you. It's nice to meet you. I'm Frida. Um, yes. <laughs> but, but my yeah. Greek baptismal name is Aphrodite, like my brother is Kenny, but underneath his name is Costandino, that was his baptismal name. And everybody called him Costa. He liked to go by the Greek, he even called his American friends Costa. So, and Ma Megan and Jason have had an experience on it. And we're going to let them tell you a little bit about it. And then I'll explain to you about EVPs and different things like that. Um, and then Pete, if he wants to add anything I'll he can throw whatever in there. Um, Since I'm recording I'm like <laughs> Megan's like pointing at me. Well, <laughs> well, <laughs> well, <laughs> well, <laughs> guys go ahead and step back this, this way. Happy experience for me. Even if my brother doesn't come around, it's just that you came and I believe and you, you saw something and that makes me happy because I know he's here. I know he sees us coming. He passed away May twenty fifth he was buried here June first. First. Mm -hmm. But the traffic of it's not only my kids but the whole neighborhood, they love Uncle Kenny, that's what they call it, Uncle Kenny. They, all the kids, and when he went to gym, the priest asked us, who was this guy? These people came from He had friends from 80 years old from his funeral, and 10 year olds and 15 year olds coming, and, and a lot of 20, 25 year olds, my kids' age kids. And they say, was, was he a, a godfather? And I said, yeah, he was everybody's godfather. Mm -hmm. He well, was we the one that everybody went to, but a lot of kids didn't have to. A lot of kids didn't have He was a Batteries good person. Almost dead on this. Whatever they needed, he helped them with. Well, we were here probably not all that long after he was buried here then, mm -hmm. because these graves were very, very, very mm -hmm. fresh. And Jason and I came out here one night just to do our thing, just the two of us. And we were actually standing over here by that bench, mm -hmm. working over there. And Jason was the first one to alert to it. And he said, uh, look up and look to your left. I did, and it was right about here, because this grave had something stuck in the back, and yeah, it had yeah. like a reef on yeah, it or something, yeah, and um, we could see right in between, probably right behind where Jason was standing, this enormous size red, deep red aura, and that was before you guys put these red lights out here, yeah. so we knew it wasn't, I mean, this was yeah, right when it was the, the red lights my mom said from Greece, they're from my mother, yeah. all of them. and these are new, right?
Betsy said to me, she was like, I'm not picking up on anybody in the area with the name Kenny. So I was like, well, can you they ask They call him Costa. Okay, yeah, and I asked her, and she said the two names that she was getting were James, Charles, and I forget. There, there was another name that she had got back here in the corner. And the James, I was able to validate that on a headstone. And one of my guys said that he saw a Charles probably about an hour or so ago when he was walking around. Mm -hmm. Well, first time I said James, I thought it was Nancy, that's a little James. Mm -hmm. Could be. That might so, be over there. Um, to the family. Oh, that's another one. You said James over there. Uh, so what was, do you know what his last name is? Sorry. Is it correct? Uh, it was a different, she actually was getting first was, and last name. I think he was 40. Because we were walking around trying to validate. We're probably ready to go, dude. It's almost midnight. Yeah. Um, so we're going to head over there. Yeah, we've, um, we've been going since 6. I, I've, I've been doing a little bit more than what I normally do, so... We're Go going somewhere. Paranormal. Yeah. I'm going somewhere to get something to eat. <laughs> yeah. well, I have not put... Shackles is open. Oh. McDonald's. Oh, oh, now yeah. you're dropping stuff and throwing I know, stuff right? And <laughs> Alright, have a good night guys. Yeah. Have a good one. Thank you so Honestly, much you guys. I felt it was meant to be to have find you here tonight. It, right? it was awesome to actually All run right. across somebody. <laughs> Especially at guys? that grave. Right, <laughs> Nicole? No, I need some kitchen up Uh oh. Myron disappeared again. Myron? There he is. Can you flash your flashlight at us? We see him. We're gonna have a regroup meeting for a minute, Myron. I want to. I'm gonna ask everybody a couple of questions, Alana. Mm -hmm. We were over. You guys watch your eyes. I'm gonna shoot a flashlight. We were over here, mm -hmm. and you went up in a hole in a fence into another little fenced mm -hmm. area. What were you feeling, and what was going on? And I just had the tingling in my head, and I don't know, just something. I just had to go. Look over there. Um, what, what drew you over there? Was it male or a female? I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Megan, you were right along with it. It almost seemed to me like lost. Like, because if you look through that other, you could see the fence line mm -hmm. that's along this whole thing. It's clear that it divots out that right. section. So there's something in there that's like, mm -hmm. it was cut off by that fence, it was like lost back there. Male or female? Oh, uh, that I don't know. It didn't seem happy. That I got. Yeah, because okay. when you guys started walking off, I was like, oh wait, <laughs> yeah, you know, how you me over here. Um, it was just, you know what I'm I'm gonna say that I'm 99.9% .9 sure that when you brushed your face, mm -hmm. that that's when you were being touched mm -hmm. by a Spanish female. I'm not positive on the age, but Betsy described her to me. Mm -hmm. If I had a sketch pad and a pencil, I could probably sketch a picture of her. It wouldn't be a really good picture, but I could sketch a picture of her. Mm -hmm. um, and she kind of, when we walked away, she kind of followed us a little bit, mm -hmm. so she knows that she can get out of that fenced area. Mm -hmm. um, did anybody else have any encounters of feelings or Tina? Anything? Well, over there I felt like something pulled my hair. Uh, over there like where? Jack, Captain Jack. By Captain mm -hmm. Jack. Was it this? We were using spirit light down there where Captain Jack, um, I set my phone with the spirit light up and I had Betsy on uh, speakerphone. Um, Betsy was picking up in a woman that was about 75 years old. She was very inquisitive. And I asked Betsy, I said, would she play games with us? And she's like, yeah. So I'm like, what's her favorite color? She's like, blue. So I set the spirit light to blue. I set the spirit light on so she steps back from it and it was clicking on already. And she clicked it on and off and on and off and on and off. And finally she was like, I'm done playing games. She just held it down. Because I was trying to get it to shut off 
and the only way that I could physically get the blue light to shut off was to recalibrate the spirit light, the touch mechanism. So we had a really positive experience there. Again, we're playing with a cell phone now. Okay, I can't guarantee you how accurate they are or not. Um, she was scared of the K2. Yeah, the so. K2 wasn't doing Um, David, do you have any experiences that see anything or feel anything? Come on out nope. from there, David. I can't see. There you go. Nope. Okay, I have Thank you. 
you're not going to believe this. You're like trying me. Um, and I was explaining to her, I'm like, Betsy, I'm feeling extremely overwhelmed. This is going on. This, you know, explains to her what I'm feeling like. And it got to the point that it was getting extremely personal. I looked at Jason, I'm like, Jason, can you turn the camera off? I, I couldn't deal with what I was dealing with and deal with having the camera on me at the same time. So, I was explaining to Betsy, you know, I'm extremely overwhelmed. I feel like my family or my friends had forgot me. Um, and not me necessarily, but it's the feelings that I was getting. Um, um, and I kept telling her, you know, this is what I've got, this is what I'm, in, in the mid-50s to early 60s, we both believed that there was a young man, um, buried out here. Um, Betsy broke him down to telling him what he was wearing. Blonde hair, part on the right hand side, he parted his, well, she said he parted his hair to the left. So I would assume the part was on the right hand side and his hair went to the left. I don't know how that works. Um, but he's got an unmarked grave out here somewhere. Um, the family was telling us that a lot of them graves out here have these little holes in the mark. Somebody could have pulled it up in the movie. So, I think that the next time that we come out, um, right over here, Myron, step to your right, there's a tree. You see where the blinking red light is? Okay, just come back this way, see the oak tree? No, to the left, Myron. No, but to your right now, right there. See, if you look straight ahead, there's an oak tree. Off from where the light's at, where we were at over there. No. Um, what I want to do is, the next time we, all of us get together and come out, is bring just a little something. Um, it doesn't have to be anything special. Um, something that has meaning, that would, something for us that has meaning, that we can leave for him to let him know that he's not forgotten. Um, I've thought about, like, maybe a little engraved coin that I can take a tack and tack it on the bottom of the oak tree. Because that's where I was picking up on that, the oak tree. And Betsy said he stayed about 12 feet away from me all the time. And, you know, I'm going to just have, like, a little engraved thing made that says, you know, you're not forgotten and rest in peace or something like that. And we'll just tack it to the bottom of the oak tree. So it's kind of, you know, maybe give him a little bit of peace of mind and not let it make him feel like he's forgotten. So, it's something small. It's something to us that's juvial or trivial. But to him, it may make all the world a difference. That, that, you know, hey, you know, these people are here, but they care. And, and it may give him what he needs to and I honestly, I don't feel that he's crossed. What he hasn't crossed is the 60s, probably. If it was the mid-50s, or let, let's say early 60s, let's say 1960. That's 40, 50, about 53 years. And that's a long time not to be crossed. So, you know, may, maybe that one little thing would be enough to to give him the opportunity to cross. Um, so that, to, to me, that's that's something that I would like to do. So, what, what do you guys think? Why not? Yep. I mean, it's it's no, nothing huge. It's you know, but for us, us, there's two, four, five, six, seven, eight, uh, us nine people that are out here. Where we're going to know it's there. We're going to know where it's 
that when we're out, you know, we can go, go visit them and say, hey man, we're thinking about you. Mm-hmm. So that, that's something huge. You know, we're not all always out here to gather evidence to, well, I would like to always gather evidence. But sometimes it's more important to think about the little things. And to us, that's something a little bit, to him, it can be something huge. Um, it's funny because I used to not think about things that way. I, I've, over the last few years, I've changed a little bit. Um, so, I'm kind of thinking that, that at this point in time, we'll go ahead and we'll wrap everything up. You just put that flash up. There it goes. Trying to get it on the video. And outside it stops. All the way around now. It works on the opening too. So it kind of rules out just the bar going across being the cause. And I'll show you. That's why I came back to, uh, when he was talking, because I went, well, what about the opening? You see? Hey, this is where me and Megan saw the full body aberration. It was just standing here. We were parked over there by the vehicles looking at us. And that's when we said, you know what? Let's go. <laughs> ne- <laughs> neither one of us were packing. <laughs> Not that it would help. <laughs> but, uh. What your hollow, po- hollow points with holy water? There you go. <laughs> Yep, even in the opening. because the pipes are square and the concrete's going into the ground. It it moved a while ago. It was, earlier it was over there but not over here, and then it was over here but not over there, and then it was all the way around. Okay, that kind of rules that out then. Yeah. (laughs) 